Baskets did evolve into the sea forms, and the sea forms evolved into the Persians. But you know, a series like the Venetians will come in, which are totally different. Go around, do it, go a little, go there. The Venetians started because Lino came to me and he said, it'd be, it'd be great to work with you on a series sometime. You use all these American gaffers. Well, I was a little reluctant because most of the American gra gaffers that I worked with, I trained myself and working with them and they understood the way I worked and we work in an asymmetrical way that's not very traditional. So working with a real uh, European master that works symmetrically uh, was going to be a challenge because my work wasn't symmetrical. So, but I said yes and uh, we made a date for the next summer because Lino came every year to Pilchuk. That winter I was trying to figure out, well, what, what am I going to do? And I went to Italy uh, sometime during that winter and I saw a great collection of sort of Art Deco Venetian glass that I'd never seen before in this palazzo. And um, I, I, I was stunned at how unbelievably innovative and beautiful these 1920s, 30s pieces were. So, gee, I thought, you know, when Lino came, next summer that I would have him make these for me. I would pretend like I was a designer in 1920s and, um, and make these sort of eccentric Art Deco pieces with reds and blacks and golds and greens and handles. And, and so Lino came and I drew, sketched one out and we started working and made one. And by the time the day was over with, I'd already begin to slide into something new. My mind couldn't stay in the 1920s, I guess. And, uh, I started making more eccentric things, and but I think we worked for two weeks. And by the time the two weeks was finished, the series had taken on a life of its own. Uh, you know, calling on forms and and techniques and um, aspects of glass from throughout history. It became a, a creative series, totally unlike anything I'd ever done. We enjoyed it so much that Lino would come back 
you know, every three or four months and I'd make another week or two with, with a Venetian. This went on for about 10 years. I had a great time, you know, working all those years with Lino on the Venetians. And after six or eight years of working, you know, bigger and bigger and bigger, and I decided that, you know, we were working so big that we were sort of restricting ourselves. And I decided that we would be, we'd go all the way back and make them small. And I called them the Piccolo Venetians. I've known Dante Marioni since probably he first started blowing glass 20 years ago or however long it's been, uh, uh, the child protege that he, that he was and learned to be a, a great glass blower. And I always thought of using him in some way. I asked him to be on the Venetian team with Lino and he, he asked, instead of being on the team, could he watch? And that impressed me because, you know, watching is one of the most important things to do when you're trying to learn to blow glass. Uh, but finally, in the late 90s, um, I asked him if he'd make some piccolo Venetians. And naturally, I jumped at the chance I mean, I didn't have to think about it for a minute or for a second, but uh, on the other hand, it uh, was rather daunting for a couple of reasons. Uh, primarily because this is a series that he started with Lino Talipietra, whom I consider to be the man. That aside, I would be heading up this uh, big old Chihuly team, which I've, n of course, never done before. But I felt like I had the um, qualifications based on my love, my profound love of this series and how much I paid attention to it beginning to end. I felt like I knew where Dale was coming from and, and um, what to do. Okay. As a kid, all I ever did was just try to emulate his every move, whether I understood it or not. And in time, I would understand it. You know, the way that he put the foot ring on the Venetians, for example, comes to mind. Every time I put foot rings on lots of the pieces I do, he certainly didn't invent the foot ring, but he absolutely perfected it. And watching how he did it, you know, every single time I do it, that's my frame of reference is how Lino did it 
1990, making Venetians, you know. What is this color? became a, a creative series, totally unlike anything I'd ever done. We enjoyed it so much that Lino would come back, you know, every three or four months and I'd make another week or two with, with the Venetians. This went on for about ten years. All I have to do is make a drawing, put it up on the wall up next to the furnace, and Lino interprets it. And he always interprets it in his own way. So there's a lot of creativity from Lino and the other people on the team. If you want to make a tall one okay. with one or two coils, okay. sure. but it doesn't have to be that shape, okay. whatever shape, okay. Madonna, okay. whatever. Okay. I, mean, I do drawings for Machia and C forms, but they're usually more of an abstraction or color. The, the Venetians, the drawings really often look like the pieces. Stop it. Uh, we start with the two leaves, uh, one lily and one coil. Nice, need to be better at everything. Okay, great, I like it. Talk to that. Big torch, no small torch. Get up in the back, Kali. Stay there. Slow in the middle. Get in the middle. In the middle there. Okay, there. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Beautiful. Ooh.